building uh, construction, road construction machines, everything from surface miners, milling machines, asphalt pavers, rollers, compactors, everything. And um, I have joined Wirtgen about two years ago when they were looking for someone um, helping them getting into positions of machines. That was the initial idea. They understood that looking at the market overall, the grading market, uh, that most of the machines now have a type of positioning device on board, GPS most of the times. Um, but I have worked, I personally have worked with Wirtgen for a very long time on the concrete paper side. Um, and we have a number of machines in the field, big, big mouth pavers on airports and big roads, which are 3D controlled with total station based systems. Um, and one of my highlights there was uh, the high speed railway project in Germany, which was the first real official introduction of such a system into the market with a very demanding job on the, on the concrete highways. Uh, railways and uh, they the tolerances there were plus minus one millimeter on the finished concrete which is extremely hard to get and the reason why they were looking into 3d was simply because of the it was a 110 kilometer long project and the the german railway developed some new algorithms to you know have the the comfort level really high going really really fast so they, they developed algorithms to smooth all that, you know, the transitioning from straights to curves and bridges and tunnels and uphill, downhill, all these things. And they figured if they would stake out string line to meet that requirement, it would be extremely difficult. Because they had areas where, you know, tunnels and bridges where string line is really hard to put in. And then they came up with an idea to say, well, do we really need string lines? Can we go an alternative way, which was 3D at that time. And that brought me, you know, into the Wirtgen side and uh, I've always been in touch with them. And over the years, we have developed a fairly strong relationship. And um, about two years ago, they finally said, well, I think uh, we need to do this. We need to get into this. We need to make our machines more intelligent. And uh, and they have asked me to join them and to start, you know, building that competence up and, and, and looking at all their machine fleets. So. And uh, also from looking at the, the, um, the project on the high speed railway, they knew that 3D is a fairly complex problem. You know, they, they know their machines can do their job, but they have no understanding and no skills on how to get there in terms of you know data serve all the surveying services around this um, and they always said this is not where we want to be in you know we want to stay on the machine side we understand that the machine they need technology to be better to be competitive in the market to be more productive and um, but they said they also understand their limits you know where they cannot be and, and so when I started I looked at all the machines they have you know milling machines surface miners concrete pavers everything and you know I came up with a couple of ideas and, and suggestions to our management and said look on any of these machines we can do something where should we start and so I made a couple of concepts um, also having learned a lot from my past history when I developed two generations of 3D control systems, uh, particularly for concrete pavers. And I think I understood that, you know, not just from a, a data point of view or a handling point of view, there's also with our customers, they're not all the same. There are some big companies, they can handle the data flow, they have everything under control. Um, but there's a number of customers which, which have machines which don't have that and they don't have the money to invest to buy this um, and they don't have the people to keep it alive even if they had it you know you still need competent people to run all these systems 
so having having that in mind, I you know I, I was looking around um, in the market for devices. That was my first approach. You know, I was thinking that if what's important for a machine manufacturer, it's it's the it's got to be easy to use and it's got to be cheap enough so our customers, you know, don't have to buying the machine plus then invest maybe the same amount again to buy a system. So I, 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 I was looking around, um, particularly on the GPS side, to find out what, where is the, the edge right now? Where, you know, where can we get in? I, I, wanted, I was looking, particularly looking for low-cost GPS with the highest precision we could get. So we, I involved a couple of universities, uh, manufacturers, and told them, look, this is my target. This is what I want to do. This is the machines we have, but I need a, a positioning system which is which is cheap enough and reliable enough to to run this this system. So um, I started with this, and I did a lot of testing and, and you know research uh, back back in the factory, and finally found a solution which which is really really nice and which was on a price level where I was able to come up with a concept for a system which may be limited in functionality to a certain extent, but it's completely focused on a particular application. And that to a price level which doesn't hurt our customers. And this, this was the start of the concept of this uh, autopilot development. And, um, and then um, once I kind of knew what the hard hardware concept was, I was thinking about the software side of things and how to build this into a product. And um, then I was looking for partners to, to help us doing this, um, which, which has worked out really great. Um, but we have also, by doing this, we, we've, we've made some strategic decisions internally to define which part of the system is, will be a core part of the system and of the Wirtgen technology, which parts can we outsource and have, you know, being done somewhere else. So we, the, the, the clear focus on it is to gain and to, you know, raise the, 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 the competence level internally of using the systems and implementing the systems on, on the different machines. And uh, this, this, this is the first approach to it. Um, and we have particularly chosen this slip form papers, which we introduced in the U.S., or which we have introduced about a year ago, to help us selling these systems as a, a tool that is not existing in the market right now. And those machines are sp special machines. They do special jobs, offset paving, tight radius curb and gutter paving, straight lines, barriers, anything in you know in terms of offset paving and uh, that we, we, we decided to build a system around that machine which fits that machine which is deeply integrated into the machine which uh, we don't sell in high volumes right now but which is good for us because that way we can learn without having you know a thousand customers uh, you know looking at it so it gives us some time to learn and then we can spread the the technology and, and the knowledge we have gained to all the other machines and uh, so now we, we've introduced the system this year at the Conexpo was was the official introduction um, we're still looking for contractors in a controlled way we were not you know selling it in many units we're still trying to learn and get feedback uh, whenever we have the opportunity uh, with customers. That's the end of part one. Please see machinecontrolonline.com for part two.